This is, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do that. Cool, okay, hi. Thank you for your patience there, and thanks for coming. So um, I'm, oh, I'm just gonna introduce myself, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm Sophie Wong, and um, I make a lot of wearable tech projects, um, but I'm not an engineer, I'm actually a designer. And uh, I wasn't really interested in electronics or I, I didn't really start tinkering with electronics until I realized that I could put them on my body. That was really interesting to me because I've always been into um, wearable things like fashion and costumes and jewelry. So um, now I actually have a book out called Wearable Tech Projects and um, that's because Pretty much everything I do, almost every project I build becomes a tutorial of some kind. And uh, often they are published in Hackspace magazine, which is a UK-based magazine. I do one for them um, every month. And they've collected all of my tutorials so far into this book, uh, which is really cool. You can learn about wearable tech through their magazine, but all in one place. Um, so it's a great place for people to get started, even if you've never worked with electronics before, or maybe you have, but you've never put it into a piece of clothing. So here's some of the things that I make. Um, this is a, a cool like light up jacket that I, I was wearing it yesterday. It's, um, it's got some NeoPixels in it. It's got a microcontroller in it with some different light animation modes. And the diffusers on the back are 3D printed on fabric. This is a sound sample glove that meows. Uh, so every finger plays a different meow sound and actually it's, it's not actually a cat meowing, it's literally me saying meow. <laughs> so uh, here's what that sounds like. Ooh. So this is technically it's meowing. Uh, and this is my Flappy Bird wearable controller hoodie. So this allows you to play Flappy Bird by flapping like a bird. Uh, so it's a really immersive way to play Flappy Bird. Uh, here's a look at the, this is when I got the prototype working. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. So uh, I didn't know I was saying oh my god. <laughs> When I, when I did that, that's just my natural reaction. Uh, I also like to make a lot of costumes. Uh, so this is my Ghostbusters costume, and I um, made the jumpsuit from scratch, and I built the proton pack from scratch. It's got all these LEDs in it and, and light-up displays. I like to put tech in my costumes. And this is my most recent costume. This is my spacesuit project. So I've got uh, lights inside the helmet. Oh, I've got the helmet right here. So I put lights inside the helmet, and um, I've also got some lights on the front of the chest piece, and there's a fan on my belt that blows air through this helmet while I'm wearing it, so I can wear it all day long um, and stay really cool and comfortable. And that's the helmet for those of you in the back. Um, and this helmet is actually plastic. It's mostly plastic with some EVA foam on top of it. Um, and it's incredibly light. So later on, if you want to find me and hold this thing, I think you'll be surprised. It's incredibly light. But you might be thinking, like, uh, is that stuff wearable tech? Like, I thought wearable tech was like Fitbit and, um, you know, HoloLens and Snap glasses. And you're totally right. These things are all examples of consumer wearable tech, but wearable tech can also be costumes, like crazy costumes. This is James Bruton's Iron Man costume. It's this massive piece of tech, and it's a wearable. Uh, wearable tech can also be fashion, and there's a lot of really cool fashion designers working on different ways to get technology into garments. Or wearable tech can just be some new way of making your body light up. And it's kind of interesting when wearable tech crosses over into biohacking. I think that's really interesting. So there are a lot of different form factors for wearable tech right now. It can be a tattoo. It can be a medical device, an assistive device, a game controller. 
And this is really exciting because this means that if you want to dabble in wearable tech or you want to start building wearable tech, there's a lot of resources out there that you can just learn from just purely through observation because as different as these projects all look in scale and in function, the constant between all of them is that they go on the human body. And that's a difficult problem to solve for. So it's really valuable to look at these different objects and see how these designers of these projects and the engineers of these projects are solving that problem. So when you start to look at them all together, you'll, you'll notice things like wearables are often circular or tubular in shape. And this is because the human body is like a stack of cylinders. So you can think of the human body as just a bunch of cylinders, like your torso is a cylinder, your arms are cylinders, your head is like one little stubby cylinder on top. And so it makes sense that wearables are circular because that's a really natural shape to put on a cylinder. So headsets are circles, watches are circles, and clothes, like your clothes, are tubes and it's kind of crazy when you start thinking of clothes as tubes like a skirt is a tube a t-shirt is three tubes a glove is like six tubes it's like you know when you start looking at clothing and seeing the tubes it's like you the matrix has been revealed to you and you just you, you're not gonna unsee the tubes Wearables are often adjustable, and that's because fit is really hard. It's hard to make one thing that fits a lot of people, but it's also just difficult to make one thing that fits one person, because our bodies are moving all the time, and they're changing all the time. Like, if you are walking around all day, your feet at the end of the day are gonna swell. They're gonna be a different size than they were in the morning. Or maybe you have a burrito for lunch and you know you need to loosen your belt a little bit. Our bodies are constantly changing and so our wearables have to change as well. And you'll notice that watches and belts have buckles. That's a really useful strategy to achieve a, an adjustable piece of technology. Um, earbuds, they all come with these different size ear domes now because everyone's ear is a different size and shape. And the HTC Vive actually has three points of adjustment on the, um, on the headset, and that's great. That means it can fit a bunch of different size heads. If you've got a hairdo, you can make that work. So wearables are often a combination of flexible material. Oh, sorry. I'm jumping into the future. Wearables are also rounded. They have a lot of round corners. They're very smooth. And that's because hard objects and sharp corners, they don't feel good on our fleshy, soft bodies. We're pretty fragile. And a lot of electronics are, are rigid and pokey. So you'll notice that a lot of medical devices, um, they never have right angles and they never have sharp edges because that's very uncomfortable and when you've got something on your body all day long if it's rubbing against you you can get abrasion and you can get blisters um, you also notice this in electronic components that are designed for wearable applications so there's a lily pad arduino there there's a flora there's a gemma um, these are all boards that are designed to be used in wearables and they're circular they're round. If they're rectangular, their corners are rounded off. And they have surface mount components. They don't have pokey things on the bottom. So all the, f the, the bottom surfaces of these boards are perfectly flat. And that's great, because if you're putting something pokey on a piece of fabric, you're going to abrade it. You're going to tear it. It's going to damage your skin. It's not comfortable. So wearables are often a mix of flexible materials and rigid materials. And this is because soft, flexible materials are great for movement. Like that's why clothing is made of fabric because it's really comfortable and it moves with us. It's not constricting. But flexible materials are, are not really great for hardware because your hardware doesn't want to bend and flex all day. That's when you're going to get damaged. So, um, to, so a great example of this 
mix of materials is um, the spacesuit. There are a lot of different um, surfaces on the spacesuit, and a lot of the technology is centered on the rigid areas. <clears throat> and then they achieve mobility in the joints with, um, with fabric. And if you look at the power glove, I think it's kind of interesting to see these things next to each other because you can notice in the joint areas, in the wrist and in the fingers, they've got a similar thing going on. It's a flexible material and it's ridged and that is gonna help uh, with movement. And the electronics are, are built onto these surfaces that they've created on flat plastic areas that aren't gonna flex on the back of the hand and on the, the back of the arm. So the easiest way to make a piece of wearable tech is to just put some tech into something that's already wearable. You can start with a piece of clothing. Um, I really like to put tech into hoodies and jackets because jackets and hoodies are an outer layer. So you're gonna wear them over something and that means it's not gonna get dirty as often and you're not gonna have to launder it as often. You're always gonna have to clean your wearable but just to preserve the electronics in it, it's best if you can spread that out. So um, I like to put tech in an outer layer. You can also take advantage of things like lining. So in my LED jacket, I've opened the lining and I put the electronics on the inside. And that keeps the electronics off of my skin. It keeps them away from the elements and it keeps me from snagging on them. So. If you're looking for a piece of clothing to put tech into, look for something with a lining. Pockets are really useful. Um, they can hold your, your microcontroller, they can hold your battery pack. Um, you can take advantage of the features of the garment so that you don't have to build your own carrier or holder for these things. Just don't put your keys in the same pocket that your microcontroller is in. That pocket is now for electronics. Gloves are really great. This is a light painting glove. Gloves, you don't want to sew your own glove unless you're a professional glove maker, so just buy a glove. Um, I like to put tech in goggles. It feels like a headset, shoes. So these are all objects that someone else has spent a lot of time figuring out how to put it on your body, how to make it comfortable, how to make it removable. And those are things that then you don't have to figure out. You can concentrate on how to integrate your circuit into this thing. So you're gonna look for the flat areas that aren't gonna flex during wear. So not the front of the shoe, because your foot goes like that. The side is great. These are, it's a starting point for you to figure out how to make your circuit work on the human body. You're gonna need to power your wearable and you're probably gonna want a battery because nobody wants to be plugged into a wall all day. And you've got a lot of options for batteries. I'm sure you all recognize these things. Um, people love to put LiPo batteries in wearable tech, and I do as well. Um, they're small, they're really powerful, but they're kind of delicate. Um, and it's a little bit of a dicey proposition to put something that explosive directly on your body. So lately I've been moving away from LiPo batteries in my work. Um, I really like using USB battery packs. They're really, and that's like the power bank down there that you can charge your phone on. Um, a lot of microcontrollers can just plug right into that with USB. Uh, they often have a built-in on-off switch, which is one less thing that I have to make. And um, the trade-off with, with that is weight. Those are gonna be a lot heavier, they're a bit bulkier and bigger. I think it's worth it. Um, but you're gonna need to think about where you're locating that weight because nine times out of 10, your battery is gonna be the heaviest part of your project. So I like to put that close to my body. I like to keep it centered so it's not pulling me off balance or, or yanking on the rest of the project. So I thought it would be interesting and fun to actually dive into like a, a cool piece of wearable tech. And I thought, how about the ultimate piece of wearable tech, which is the spacesuit. Um, it's basically a one-man spaceship, and I just love this thing. This is the EMU. This is what NASA uses for spacewalks. So it's a bit, um, it's pretty rugged. It's got a lot of technology and engineering involved in it. And it's pretty cool when you start peeling back the layers. So 
this is the this is the torso. This is a fiberglass torso portion that is known as the hard upper torso, and it's buried inside the top part of the spacesuit. Like for a long time, I thought spacesuits were just fabric. There are some rigid portions in there, and that's where they locate the technology. So this is where you get your mix of materials going on. Um, they've got uh, so this has to be put on over your head and your shoulders. It's notoriously difficult to get into this thing. And the front of the torso has the control panel of the spacesuit. And uh, what's really interesting here is this is this is big and it's the controls are really robust so that the astronauts can can work with this control panel when they're wearing those ginormous gloves um, but and and the sternum this chest area is actually a really great place to house technology because it's one of the only like almost flat areas of your body and it doesn't take a lot of flex when you move around However, if you're an astronaut wearing this spacesuit and you want to work on your control panel, you literally cannot see it from inside the spacesuit. You have to, you're looking down, you can't see what's going on. So all this, the astronauts have um, mirrors on their wrists so they can look at the mirror and do whatever they got to do on the front of their chest. And you, if you look closely, you'll notice that the writing is backwards. It's a really interesting design solution to that problem. Uh, the backpack of the H of the EMU is really iconic, and it is where they house the life support system for the um, for the astronaut. There's a lot of technology in there. Obviously, weight is less of a concern in outer space. Um, but fit is still a concern. So I was amazed to find out that the spacesuit is actually really adjustable. Um, the limbs of the spacesuit have these metal rings that can separate the limbs off, and you can switch out sizing rings. So every astronaut is custom fit. They, um, they have their own custom configuration of their limbs and their sizing rings uh, to make the suit as comfortable and as mobile for them as possible. And obviously the helmet is really cool. Um, that's on the left, you can see the um, shade visor down in place. And notice that the lighting and the cameras are mounted on the outside of the helmet. That's just something to keep in mind. So um, yeah, I love this spacesuit so much and I decided to make my own spacesuit. And like, if you look really closely at them side by side, you can see that my spacesuit doesn't look anything like NASA spacesuit. It looks totally different. And that's because I'm making a costume. I'm making something aesthetic. And um, for me, the first priority in my costume was aesthetic. So I, I love the NASA spacesuit, but I was really more drawn to like Alien. Like I love the spacesuits in Alien. I love 2001 A Space Odyssey, Prometheus. You know, these are the things that make me go to Joann's and start buying fabric. The Expanse. So this is where all my inspiration came from for the aesthetic of the piece. But I still wanted it to function for me. Um, I didn't need to keep myself alive in space, but I needed to keep myself alive at Comic-Con. So my second priority was comfort. And I did not build my hard upper torso out of fiberglass. I built it out of EVA foam. And it's re really comfortable. It's flexible. I used a laser cutter to get some really detailed um, surface decoration and um, to achieve a good um, pattern. But you can see there's still some similarities. So the armholes are really large. and. That's about the size armhole you need for a semi-rigid garment to still be comfortable and let you move your arms around. Um, I used a similar location for, for the tech that I wanted to put on my spacesuit. Um, but because my spacesuit is aesthetic, I could make some decisions to make it more functional for me. So I mentioned earlier that the fiberglass uh, torso for the spacesuit is one solid piece. I broke my torso into two pieces. So it comes apart at the shoulders and at the side waist. 
So it's really easy for me to put it on and take it off. And I can pack it because I can, I can take those pieces apart completely and nest them in one another. I also raised the bottom edge of the torso way up high off my waist. So my spacesuit comes up to like here and it only comes down to about there. And that gives me a lot of mobility in my upper body that you will not have in something that goes all the way down to your waist. Also gives you more surface area to mount your electronics. Um, so my electronics are in the control panel in the front. It's a control panel. It's actually just LEDs in there. Um, I also cannot see this when I'm wearing it, so it comes off completely. It's just held on with magnets. I just pull it off, switch it on, and stick it back on. I have a fan in my belt, so similar to the spacesuit, my life support system is on my back, and it's just a tiny little computer fan that routes air up through this silicone hose into my helmet, and that keeps my visor from fogging up and gives me a little bit of cool air. And when the helmet is mated to the, the backpack of my suit, you can't see that hose at all. It's just hidden in there doing its job. I've also got a battery pack on my waist. So I mentioned I love those USB battery packs. I've got three little lipstick size battery packs on my belt. And I just, I kind of turn them into like an aesthetic prop. They just look like miscellaneous like space equipment. Um, but they're actually really useful. Like I was charging my phone, I was powering my, my fan, I gave one to someone else whose battery had died at the con. Like, I feel like there's a product here I could, I could design, just a waist-mounted USB battery pack. So I've also got some pleated joints in my spacesuit, and that's you know an aesthetic nod to what's going on in the, the actual spacesuit. But um, in the actual spacesuit, you'll notice the pleating at the joints, it's actually there to make it possible for the astronauts to bend their arms and use their joints when the suit is pressurized. Now, my suit is not pressurized, but um, the pleats kind of puff out when I do bend my arms, and they kind of give this illusion of pressure in my suit. And of course, the whole reason I made this spacesuit was just so I could make a helmet with lights in it, and I'll just be honest. And um, it's still my favorite thing about this spacesuit, because honestly, like lights in helmets, are they look so badass. They are not functional at all. You don't really want to put lights on the inside of your helmet, of any helmet, because you can't see out, especially in dark environments like space. Like, you can't see out because it creates a glare on your visor. But dang, it looks cool. So, so that's what I did, and that's what I wanted. And I, what I really wanted was this cinematic moment. Like, I wanted to feel like I was in Alien, so, or 2001. So uh, here's me living that dream. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. So that was a really long project, just so I could do that for a few seconds. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you want to know more about this project, I've got um, an article in the current issue of Make Magazine that's all about um, how I laser cut this, the EVA foam for this project. Um, and I've got an article in Hackspace Magazine about how I put the lights in it. And they're audio reactive, as you saw. Um, and if you're interested in my book, you can, you can definitely go buy it, but you don't have to. You can actually download the whole thing for free. So um, that's a long URL that you can type in to get to that. And yeah, um, I would love to see your projects if you're working on something wearable or something space related or just anything that you think is cool. So come and find me on Twitter, I'm Sophie Wong. And on Instagram and YouTube, I'm Sophie Wong Makes. Thank you.